Number 33. Suppose a 200 kilogram motorcycle has two wheels, like the one described in problem 10.15, and is heading toward a hill at a speed of 30 meters per second. How high can it coast up the hill if you neglect friction? All right. Um, so these pic this picture is from uh, question number 15. Here's also the diagram I created for that question. So we're going to have to use the same values. The um, internal radius is going to be 0.2 meters. The external radius is going to be 0.33 meters. It's basically an annular ring or an annular cylinder. Okay. Um, the wheel is approximated by that shape. And here is the moment of inertia for the annular uh, cylinder. Uh, the Each wheel also has a mass of 12 kilograms. How do we know that? Again, that's from problem number 15. Now, um, here's the motorcycle. Looks more like a skateboard, but it's a motorcycle. Just pretend. And it is now going to be traveling at 30 meters per second. And it is going to then travel up a hill. And we're going to try to figure out the final height. Okay. So we're neglecting friction. And therefore, we are to assume for part A that no uh, energy due to friction is lost in the whole process. Okay, so what that means is that the energy that's inherent initially will equal the energy that's inherent finally. The initial state we, we will consider to be the state of just before the motorcycle reaches the ramp, and the final state will, uh, final state, uh, will then be the location when the motorcycle reaches the top of the hill. Okay, now that being the case, we can understand the nature of the energies at play uh, by considering heights and velocities and so on and so forth. So in terms of the initial state here, the motorcycle is traveling with a velocity. Therefore, it has, uh, I was going to say tangential velocity. Therefore, it has translational uh, kinetic energy. Okay. Uh, that's basically energy of linear motion. Now, not only does it have a translational kinetic energy, but it will also have rotational kinetic energy because it has two wheels. All right. So we can now write the we can now write this basic equation. So the kinetic energy of linear motion plus the kinetic energy of rotation of motion. This is all of the energy that's inherent initially. There is no potential energy because the motorcycle has no height to it. All right, that will then equal the final energy when the motorcycle reaches the top of the hill. When it reaches the top, the maximum height is when there is no more motion of this motorcycle. So therefore it is at rest at the top. That being the case, we know then all of the energy at the end is going to be in terms of potential energy. Okay. So now these are all uh, initial values. These are all final values. I don't think I'm going to really need to um, plug in subscripts there, but just keep that in mind. Okay. Now what we're going to look to do is uh, we are now going to um, expand on these values. Okay, so the kinetic energy of linear motion is just one half mv squared. The kinetic energy of rotational motion is going to be defined by the formula over here. We've been doing this for a while. One, uh, one half multiplied by the system's moment of inertia multiplied by the angular velocity squared. And that should then equal the mass multiplied by gravity multiplied then by the final height. Okay, what we are after is we are after that h. Okay. So now, I mean, what we could do is if we wanted, we could solve this thing for H uh, right now, basically just divide out the MG, okay? So if we wanted to, the formula would be something like this. One half MV squared plus one half I. Actually, you know what? Let me also, just for, just for, because we have a common half, right, in between those objects. So let's just combine them. So uh, one half multiplied by MV, oops, multiplied by mv squared plus i omega squared, all then divided by mg, okay? Now, before I go any further, I got to really be careful about what mass am I talking about here and what mass am I talking about here, okay? When we're talking about translational uh, kinetic energy, we're talking about the, mad, the total mass of the object that's moving. And they told us that the total mass of the object that is moving is 200 kilograms. It's a 200 kilogram motor, uh, motorcycle. So this mass right here is the mass of the motorcycle. I write that as a little m. Similarly, the potential energy is going to be also defined as the total uh, system's mass. Okay, multiplied by gravity, multiplied by the final height. So this mass is also the mass of the motorcycle. Okay, that'll become important in a second. Now, 
Expanding on these terms, so we realize that we might not have enough information in order to solve the problem, right? We don't know the angular acceleration, so how do we do that, right? We can't solve at the moment. So now what I'm thinking to myself is, well, we do know velocity, okay? And I'm thinking, is there any way I can relate tangential velocity or linear, you know, another word, linear velocity to angular velocity? You have to remember this equation that the linear velocity is equal to the radius multiplied by the angular velocity. To solve this thing for the angular velocity, all it would simply be is the omega is equal to linear over r, right? Linear velocity over the radius. Now, um, so why don't we now take this and plug it on in, okay? So we'll take this, plug it on in for omega. So now we're gonna have something like this. H is equal to one half m, so this is mass of the motorcycle multiplied by the velocity squared, plus now moment of inertia multiplied by then the uh, v squared over r squared. Right? Remember, I would plug in v over r here, and then each of them are squared, so I can just distribute essentially the square just like that, and then divide this whole thing now by mg. Okay, so that's fine. Now we have to start, though, expanding on our moment of inertia. Now, the wheel, the nature of the wheel is, like I mentioned before, it's an annular cylinder or an annular ring. And that being the case, this has a certain moment of inertia, okay? Now, before we also continue, I was going to take it into account in a second, but we have to make sure, okay? So I'll, I'll actually going to, um, I'm actually going to make the adjustment uh, over, over here, okay? Remember, there are two wheels in the problem, Okay, there are two wheels in the problem. That being the case, this right here is going to be for one of the wheels, okay? This is the um, moment of inertia for a particular wheel. If I have two wheels, I just have to multiply this thing by two, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'd like to factor out the one half, so I'm just gonna leave the two and I'm gonna multiply this piece by two instead, okay? So let's just add that on into the equation. Um, I was going to do it a little later, but as I'm just looking at it, let me do it, I think earlier might be better. Okay, so I'm just going to add in the value of 2 because there are two wheels, so I'm going to multiply that value by 2. All right, um, now, focusing on the moment of inertia for this particular uh, system, um, all I would have to now do is substitute this on in for i. Okay, now one other thing that's important is, so I'm going to do that in a second, and another idea, there's a lot of concepts here, so I'm kind of just... As I'm going, I'm kind of seeing that certain concepts are coming up, so I'm just talking about them as they enter my mind. You might ask yourself, um, in terms of this r, you know, the radius, well, what radius, right? If you look at the picture, there's two, there, there's a radius that is measured to be 0.8, that's the internal, and the external was measured to be 0.33, okay? So what r am I talking about here? Well, since I have this formula here, it says that, remember, this is basically the tangential velocity, okay? The tangential velocity will be the same thing as the linear velocity of the object that is moving, okay, 30 meters per second. Now, what's important then is that this radius, if, if you think about this, where on this picture would, could I draw a vector for the tangential velocity? Well, the tangential velocity is the velocity located at a point tangent, right, to the wheel. So that's located on the most external part, okay? So the radius then that I would be using in this formula here, in this here, and then this r would be the external radius, okay? Because you might say, well, can I choose? And if I choose, I get two different answers, so what's the story? The story is that I'm gonna plug in a little e here for external, okay, a little, a little e, all right? Okay, so now let's substitute that i, like I was saying before. So I'm gonna do some work on up here. So h is equal to one half multiplied by the mass of the motorcycle times its velocity squared, plus now two multiplied by uh, the moment of inertia. Okay, so it's m, now the, the mass of this part is the mass of the object that's rotating. Now the object that's rotating in the problem are the tires, or is the tire, okay? So the mass here is going to be the mass of the tire. Now that's important, so I'm gonna write m sub t, okay? Because there are different masses. If you just write m in the problem, you might make a mistake. So that's mt over two, okay? mt over two multiplied now by, and look at this, right? There's barely any room. 
Okay, so let me just move this over a little bit. I'm gonna move this whole top part on over maybe a little bit if I can too. Sorry guys, just bear with me. Okay, and I'll just leave that for now. So now I, I'll just take this shift it a little bit. Okay, so now this is then multiplied by the internal, it doesn't really matter which one comes where, internal radius squared plus the external radius squared. Okay, that's, this is the whole I value. I just substituted that in. And now I have to then multiply that by V squared over R squared sub E. Okay, and I'll close the brackets out like that. Let me just add a bracket on in here. So we can make it a little neater. And I know it's already, the math is already becoming crazy, right? This is divided by the mass of the motorcycle times G. I should be writing that the whole time down here. Okay, this is the mass of the motorcycle again. All right, so now uh, basically, right, we have everything, okay? Now you can simplify this, do the algebra on your own, that's fine, okay? But this is the equation. How did I know that? Well, because I know I know, I know that I know that I know, I have all the variables, right? The mass of the motorcycle, 200. The velocity, the linear velocity, 30, okay? The mass of the tire, 12. They gave it to us in problem number 15. The internal radius, 0.28. External 0.33, external 0.33, this is going to be 30. The mass of motorcycle 200 again, and gravity is 9.8. See, so that's all. So now all you gotta do is just plug in the values, okay? So H now will equal one half multiplied by 200 times 30 squared. Plus now, I'm also gonna just simplify this slightly, the twos will cancel, okay? So multiply then by the mass of the tire, so that's 12 times then the internal radius of 0.28 squared. I'm gonna write this above and below just to save a little space. Okay, plus then 0 0.33, which is the external radius squared. Then multiply by 30 squared, which is the V, over then the external of 0.33 squared. Close that on off. Okay, that bracket should have been the same as this right in here. So let me just fix that slightly. And then divide it by the mass of the motorcycle, which is 200 multiplied by gravity of 9.8. All right. Calculation just a little tough, but that's the concept. So let's see what we can do. All right. So let's do in the parentheses, uh, in the brackets first, so 200 times 30 squared plus now 12 times parentheses 0.28 squared plus 0.33 squared. And then that value will be multiplied now by uh, 30 squared all over 0.33 squared, close them on up. And I made an error somewhere because the calculator is yelling at me. So let me try that again. I'm just going to, uh, let me, I'm gonna do this stage in pieces, all right? So let's do the inside that parenthesis first, so 0.28 squared plus 0.33 squared. Okay, that's then going to be multiplied by 12 times 30 squared divided by 0.33 squared. Okay, we got that value. Then we're gonna add to that 200 times 30 squared. Then multiply that by 0.5. And then take now that whole thing and divide it now by 200 times 9.8. What do we get? We get about 50.6 50 point, 50 or so, right? So that looks good to me. I got like, yeah. So that's fine. So here we go. So this is about 50.6. And uh, what's now going to be the, so the height is in terms of meters, okay? So that will be roughly the final height. All right, the final height here is going to be, if there's no friction and it's just allowed to come to rest at the top, the final height will be 50.6 meters. So that takes care of letter A. Letter B, how much energy is lost due to friction if the motorcycle only gains an altitude of 35 meters before coming to rest? So you can, you can oops, you can think about this now. Um, the, when there is no friction, right, the total potential energy, so I'll write potential energy without friction, right, would be equal to mgh without the friction, right, the height that it was would obtain without the friction, okay. Then the potential energy with friction would be equal to the mass multiplied by gravity multiplied now by the height um, that was obtained with friction, okay. And if you want to know then the energy that's lost, well, it would simply be the difference between these two, right. Potential energy without minus the potential energy with friction. The difference between these two is going to now give you the energy lost due to friction. Okay, 
So writing that another way, because I don't have much space, writing that another way, it would simply look something like this, mg times h without minus h with friction. Okay, so this is simply going to be 200, the mass of the whole body times 9.8, multiplied then by the 50.6 minus the 35. And what do we get? Let's see. 200 times 9.8 times parenthesis 50, 50.6 minus 35. And we get about, in terms of scientific notation, 3. Point, I don't know, 0, 06 or so times 10 to the 3.06 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3. It looks like 4. And that is in terms of joules since they're asking for the energy. So this is the amount of energy, about 30,000 or so. Uh, joules of energy would be lost. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, help us out, hit the like button, and I'll see you in the next question. Take care.